Welcome to Emerald Downs Weekly from Emerald Downs. Racing this weekend, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And it's also Kentucky Derby Week in the world of thoroughbred racing. Mm -hmm. Big event Saturday in Emerald Downs to be hopping. Joe Withy along with track president Phil Ziegler and promotions manager Gary Doherty. Fellas, uh, hey, every weekend seems to be big and this weekend is included, promotions man. Yeah, we got three days of racing and it kicks off Friday night. It's Cinco de Mayo night here at Emerald Downs, mm -hmm. May 5. We'll have a DJ near the winter circle and craft beers will be on sale that night. Should be a fun evening if the weather stays true and blue. First race at 6.30 on Friday nights. And of course, as Gary said, uh, music, beverage specials, live racing, and the $1,000 horseshoe toss, which almost uh, was won last week, Bill. You know, I was standing out there and Gary went running out there because it's his budget that the 1000 comes <laughs> out of. Somebody yeah. gets a ringer, it's $1,000. And mm -hmm. our contestant last week was really close yeah. really close gets a hundred bucks right just for uh being the closest Th three quarters of an inch phil three quarters of an inch three quarters he of got an pretty inch. close i didn't know it was his budget no wonder the guy was declared <laughs> a non-ringer person i know but it, it, hit, it actually hit the, the hit the post, stake, the yeah. stake it and it stayed very near and i went out there did the official measuring and it was about three quarters and i related to joe and the person throwing and I probably should have had him come out and look at it to verify that he, he didn't win the $1,000, but he won $100, but mm -hmm. it was fun. So for two weeks, we've been have very close throws, but not had a ringer yet. It's okay. a lot of fun. Yeah. It's free fun. to sign up for. Just come into the track on Fridays, fill out your free entry blank, and three names will be called, and also a couple alternates. So the horseshoe toss is after the fifth race every Friday night, correct? That's correct. Okay. That's happening, and uh, of course the Kentucky Oaks tomorrow as well. Emerald Downs open for full card simulcasting, the fifth floor. Just a fantastic brand new simulcast center. Uh, and then Saturday, Kentucky Derby Day, uh, we're going to have a good crowd out here as in every year. Yeah, this is the one day of the year you can come on out to Emerald Downs and if, you know, just people watch because yeah. we get a lot of the um, party buses that show up. Yeah. Groups of folks, they get all dressed up and they uh, come in groups and they come out to the track on Derby Day. We're hopeful and the sun is supposed to be shining. We hope that the weather forecast holds up. We're gonna be a little cool maybe, but um, it's such a great day out here at Emerald Downs or any racetrack in the country on Derby Day. It's special. If you wear a Derby themed hat, you get in free. Plus we're gonna have a giveaway for um, judging of these folks that wear their hats, not just the ladies, you know, everybody thinks ladies derby hats, but guys can wear hats. We have one, what's the category? Dapper Dan? Yeah, Dapper right? Dan. Didn't you win that years ago? Uh, no, no, did not. Uh, I, was, <laughs> I, I was missing a photo, I came in second. You, you came in second, yeah. right. Yeah, so, uh, and then we have a category, I think, for for children as well to get dressed mm -hmm. up for the derby and you can come and get judged and win some great prizes and of course anybody wearing a derby themed hat automatically just gets in free on derby day our first post is at 2 p.m and the derby is just after 3 30 yeah. and we'll be running until about six o'clock and then we have an after derby party upstairs on the fifth floor so the party is going to go all day and all night here at emerald downs on saturday it's going to be a fun Fine. day. It's Derby Day. Everybody wants to pick the winner of the Kentucky Derby. You've got your chance. The payoffs are generally quite lucrative because of the 20-horse field. So, Derby on Saturday. And uh, thinking back, this is 2017. Go back to 1977, 40 years ago. Seattle Slough won the Kentucky Derby and route to becoming a Triple Crown champion. And, Gary, uh, what do you remember about 77? You were a little younger then. Yeah, I think I was in elementary school oh, okay. back in that, that day. And I remember reading a story in the Seattle Times where Lionker showed the race live. They had 75 color TVs that year, and they showed the race live, but you couldn't wager on it. You'd come out and root on Seattle slew the win, but they took no bets that day at Lionker's. Well, okay, that was before the satellite technology mm -hmm. came in and simulcasting was going on between tracks. but. Local people here in Western Washington, Eastern Washington, because yeah. Karen and Mickey Taylor are from Eastern Washington. We were very excited. The name Seattle Slew. He had already become two-year-old champion. Mm -hmm. He was still undefeated. He was absolutely phenomenal early in his three-year-old year. And uh, I believe he was an odds-on favorite on Derby Day. 
get a little bit of trouble in that first turn, or excuse me, before the first turn. Out of the gate, he just uh, broke a little bit slowly, got shut off, and he just bulldogged his way through the leaders before the first turn, and after that, he led all the way and remained undefeated. Uh, yeah, the name Seattle Slough, the tie to Washington, mm -hmm. the tie to local racing, we haven't had a lot of that in the Kentucky Derby, and that, that year is very memorable. Yeah, and being a kid in the 70s, you know, we all can relate to this, at least at this table. A lot of our listeners may, mm -hmm. may not, folks watching us on CSN, and don't remember the 70s. Maybe they weren't born yet, but... Yeah. For us, the 70s, the really golden age of horse racing, for us, we had Secretariat in 73, Seattle Sioux Triple Crown in 77, Affirm Triple Crown in 78. Yeah. And if it wasn't for, what, a safety pin that got in the way of Spectacular Bid, probably would have won the Triple Crown in 79. Mm -hmm. And a lot of great horses. Then you throw in other ones like Ruffian and Foolish Pleasure and Forgo that all ran in the 70s. And it was quite a decade, and Seattle yeah. Slough was right up there with them. And I didn't know this, Joe. You told me last year, and I was shocked, really, that we're the only racetrack in the country that has a stakes race named after Seattle Slough. And it was first run in the mm. summer of 1977. Yep. Throughout the history of remaining history of Long Acres, three years at Yakima Meadows, and every year at Emerald Downs. And uh, most years, Karen and Mickey Taylor come and... Uh, are the honorary yeah. stewards for the Seattle Slough Stakes, and we are very proud to do that and commemorate uh, one of the greatest forces in racing history. Not only was he the only undefeated yeah. Triple Crown winner, and remains that, mm -hmm. American Pharaoh lost his first career That's start. Right. Yeah. And uh, not only that, but his uh, record as a sire and a sire of sires is absolutely phenomenal. Uh, you ask any breeder, that's been around for the last 40 years, uh, they'll say Seattle Slough goes down in history as one of the great forces in thoroughbred racing. What, what, they, what was the purchase price for that horse? Was it 17500 I think it was seventeen five. dollars He was a bargain wow. because yeah. uh, the Taylors Amazing. made a lot of money <laughs> off the great Seattle Slough. We're going to take a short time out, and we'll be right back here on Emerald Downs Weekly. Emerald Downs Weekly on CSN and a programming note, no Emerald Downs Live this Saturday, what? May 6th. Uh, no Emerald Downs Live, Phil. Oh, we what are people going to do? <laughs> well, they can come out to the true. track, right? Okay. That's true. We could do a whole segment on that. What are people going to do? Mm -hmm. But uh, there is a Kentucky Derby yeah. on Saturday, which is going to get a lot of attention, both uh, eyes local and eyes on television. So. Uh, no Emerald Downs Live 2 to 6 this particular Saturday. We'll pick it back up on Saturday, May 13th, right here on CSN. We get phone calls, you know. Yes. When that show's not on, there will be the phones will be mm -hmm. ringing. They all say, where's Joe? <laughs> they all want to know. I watch Joe every Saturday. Where's yeah. Joe? He's not on. And okay. they, they really are, they get quite mad about that. I'll try and show up for my duties, you know. Well, they can come out. So folks watching now, this is the hint. Come on out to the track and see Joe. Mm -hmm. You know, there is a local angle in this Kentucky Derby. And it is the dam, the mother of number one looking at Lee. Her name is Langara Lass. She raced here at Emerald Downs. And her breeder, Ray Hansen, uh, won numerous stakes here at Emerald Downs in the late 90s, early 2000s with Dave and Grant Forrester as trainer. And Langara Lass is the dam of Looking at Lee, number one. And uh, Ray Hansen also bred Looking at Lee, so he's back Jeez. in Kentucky for a lot of excitement. A breeder of a horse that's racing in the Kentucky Derby. And uh, they should know where to find him early. He's going to be dropping yeah. back. There, there's a lot of closers in this race, but Looking at Lee likes to be way back and mm -hmm. makes a run like pretty much every time that he's run. He's made a bid at the uh in the stretch and running at oaklawn is not the easiest thing to do to close at oaklawn yep. in some of these races when there's a lot of speed so maybe 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 looking at lee can uh can get there i think they all have a shot as we're going to talk about our picks but looking at lee has a chance yeah looking at lee by looking at lucky and i'm pretty sure he had the one post in his kentucky derby and that hurt him and then he ran poorly got bumped a couple times he was inside either one or two got bumped, got taken out of the race, and then he came back two weeks later and won the Preakness. But I, Langara Lass, let's go back to her, Gary. I know you had a thought there, but I yeah. don't mean to. We need to stay on topic a little this week. We've been scolded for that. Really? But <laughs> no, just joking. <laughs> anyway, 
You remember Longara last racing here in the Northwest? She was a stakes winner at Hastings. Yeah, a little she, bit. She come down here on at Emerald Downs, and I was handicapping for the Seattle Times. And I remember put her in the top three. I mean, she had some ability. I guess she never won here, but she hit the top three yeah. a few times. And yeah, it's, it's fantastic to see a horse who ran here at Emerald Downs have a horse running the Kentucky Derby. Really yeah. cool. Lagara Lass, uh, third in our Irish Day handicap of 2006, actually, or 2005 it was. So, and again, a multiple stakes winner at Hastings. So uh, that is a nice tie to the Northwest. Uh, the last tie to the Northwest maybe to win the Kentucky Derby, Mike Pegram, 1998 mm -hmm. with Real Quiet, and of course the Taylors uh, in t uh, 1977, as we mentioned, with Seattle Slough. Well, we've been around for a lot of derbies. It's <coughs> a big day in thoroughbred racing. Uh, fans and uh, dedicated fans certainly pay attention. Uh, going back in your life, uh, what's the most memorable Kentucky Derby for you, Phil? You know, we were talking about this before we uh, got on the set here, and we said, well, it's got to be something that we remember not going back before our time. So the, the two that stick out to me are... I'll just say the gutsy gelding from New York, Funny Ooh. Side. For a lot of reasons, when Funny Side won in 2003, I mm -hmm. believe, um, he was, first of all, geldings don't win the Kentucky Derby. And second yeah, of all, right. New York State Reds don't win the Kentucky Derby. And third of all, the group of owners that he had are generally not the people that win the Kentucky Derby. And then Funny Side went out and did it. Yeah. And darn near won the Triple Crown that year. So that's one. The other one that I'll remember for a different reason just a few years ago is Mind That Bird, because you could look at those past performances now today, and you would say that horse should have been 500 to 1. He wound up going off at 50 to 1. They made a movie about it. Mm -hmm. What was the that movie? 50 to 1, oh, yes. Okay. Calvin Burrell was, was great in that movie playing himself. As the Calvin Bull Rail? Bull Rail. Okay. He was great. But that horse, I mean, in that race, it just shows you sometimes you can handicap these races and look for pedigree and everything else, and none of it <clears> mattered because <throat> Mind That Bird was coming off a fourth place finish at Sunland Park. It <laughs> done nothing. Got in <clears> the race on the old rules that they had because he had done well in a couple of stakes oh. races at the age of two in Canada. They found out that he was eligible for the race. They put him in. They had no right to be in the race. They went out and won. Mind the bird never won another race after that. That's right. So just well, remarkable. You just don't know what's going to happen on the first Saturday in May. Yep. He ran well in the money in the Preakness and Belmont, mm -hmm. but you're right. He never won another race. How about you, Gary? I think the first one I remember the best was um, at Lonkers in 1981. Pleasant Colony came from way back, and I was almost of age to bet. I wasn't. But you could bet the Derby that year, so I had somebody make some bets for me. And Pleasant Colony, sure enough, came running late in the stretch, won the race, and I was just so excited because I had figured this race out, and it came to fruition, and that kind of hooked me on horse racing. It was that 1981 Kentucky Derby won by Pleasant Colony. One other one that comes to memory was 30 years ago this year, uh, Ali Sheba won the 87 Kentucky Derby. And I went back and in person saw that race. Oh, did you? Yes, I wow. did. And I spent 10 days reading the racing form, and I uh, finally landed on Demons Be Gone and Pat Day. That was my pick. And at the track that day, it must have been 90 degrees, 95 degrees, one of my friends had never been to the races. He was listening to an elderly lady in the box next door, and they, were, they came up with a horse called Ali Sheba. He makes his first horse race bet on Ali Sheba. I love the game, spent many years betting the horses. I got demons be gone. My horse pulls up on the backside, starts bleeding, and his horse almost falls down entering the stretch, and uh, Chris McGarren regallered him, yeah. and Ali mm -hmm. Sheba won the race, and uh, it was a fantastic day, and my friend who never bet a horse race is heading to the window to cash in his bets. One of the great uh, horses of the 80s, for sure, Ali Sheba, trained by Hall of Famer Jack Van Berg. I'm going to go back to 73, and Secretariat, 72 was really the first year I started following racing all year, and mm -hmm. Secretariat was two-year-old champion, just seemed invincible. Uh, horses almost <coughs> ran every two weeks back then, and he was just rattling off these major wins in New York and Maryland on the east. So Secretariat coming through in the 73 Derby, being the first Triple Crown winner since 19. 48, 25 years. Hey, let's go to a trivia question. Trivia. How about this one for this week? Name a horse who raced in the Kentucky Derby and later that same year in the Long Acres or Emerald Downs Derby. You know one of those horses? 
We'll have the answer when we come back right here on Emerald Downs Weekly. Thanks for joining us on Emerald Downs Weekly, 8 to 9 p.m. every Thursday evening right here on CSN as we get ready for another Friday, Saturday, and Sunday of live racing action at Emerald Downs. How about that uh, trivia question we just posed? You remember a horse that raced in the Kentucky Derby and later that same year raced in the Long Acres or Emerald Downs Derby? Well, you got to go back a few years now. It's been a while. 1956, mm -hmm. Count Chick. 1982 Castellaria and 1991 Sea Cadet all raced in the Kentucky Derby and later in the Northwest Derby. And those three horses all happened to win mm. the Long Acres or Derby. So that's wow. a little drop in class from the Kentucky Derby. <laughs> and uh, they did very well. Okay. Well, let's make a derby pick. I've been on the same horse since uh, last November, of course. No, you uh, have. You've never changed your mind every uh, week. Gary, it's your turn to Joe. make it. <laughs> who's going to win this year's Kentucky Derby? This year, I'm sticking with the Tappet horse. Tapperit. Okay. He's run one bad race. He costs, Phil, he costs uh, seven figures, $1.5 mm -hmm. million dollars in that range. He's run some bang-up races. I'm due for him to come back and run a big one here on Saturday. Uh, big field. You deserve a good price you can bet the Derby, and he'll be double ditches, I believe. Oh, sure. He's going to be. He's 20 to 1 on the morning 20? line. So there's so many horses that are going to be between 15 and 25 to 1. Taprit post 16 with uh, Jose Ortiz aboard. Phil, how about your Derby selection? Are you uh, sticking with the, your Yeah, You know, horse? a couple, yeah, a few weeks ago on the show, I picked uh, Gunavera. Yeah. And uh, the trainer who's been through a couple of kidnappings, I know that that will show up on the NBC <laughs> broadcast, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. Is that but in the running line there? It's a Let's great see. story. It is, yeah, it's yeah. one of the great stories of this Ooh. year's Derby. Um, but I like the horse in the fact that running at Gulfstream had kind of bad post positions in those races in the Florida Derby Fountain of Youth <laughs> and won the Fountain of Youth easily and then um, finished third as the even money favorite in the Florida Derby. Just like his running style, I think he kind of fits the Derby. Looking for somebody. And, you know, this year's Derby doesn't have much of a pace, so they're all wondering who's going to go out in front. But with 20 horses, somebody's going to be out there, and there's going to be a speed duel. And I think Gunavera sits right in the middle. I like his post position. I don't think he's going to be 15 to 1. I think he's going to get bet, bet down a little bit from that, maybe 8 or 9 to 1. I still think a very good value. We'll see. Well, how about his jockey on Gunavera, J.J. Javier Castellano, who is uh, almost the – annual Eclipse Award winning yep. jockey mm -hmm. these years, and uh, he hasn't won the Derby. You like him, Castellano? Yeah, I think he's a great guy, true professional. Uh, every year, like Joe was saying, yeah. he's, he's been a top jockey, and uh, I don't think even, I think Javier has him in the top three. He may be like, know, maybe 10 rides, no first, no second. I'm close, maybe one off, Joe. Mm -hmm. Okay, who are you picking? I'm going to, oh, me? Uh, yeah. Well, I'm, I'm a yeah. Kraken. That's who I was on last November. Yeah. You have uh, a big future bet, don't you, on McCracken? Four. No, I don't have that bet. Huh? But uh, uh. <laughs> four <laughs> races he won to start his career, and three of those were at Churchill Downs. So he is well familiar. Yes, his bluegrass was mm -hmm. a little bit dull. Uh, distant third in the bluegrass, his most recent start. But McCracken, a son of Ghost Sapper with Ian Wilkes, that camp Ian Wilkes, who learned under Carl Nafsker. Oh. Uh, they know how to win the Derby. How about uh, Street Sense and going back further to mm -hmm. Unbridled? I think McCracken is going to bring his A game with Brian Hernandez, 5-1 to one morning line. That's my pick for the Derby. You know, well, there's another little Northwest tie here. You know, none of us talked about Mario Gutierrez, who, oh boy. who won the Derby twice and then won the Long Eric Smile in those same two years, and he's got a decent chance. And, of course, got his start running uh, Hastings Park yeah. and has some great connections to the Northwest. He was here for our 20th anniversary, came here yeah. as, a, as just as a fan, as a guest That's great. to be here. So we're always rooting for him. What's his record in the, mile, in the Kentucky Derby? It's pretty good. He's betting two for two. That's not bad. No jockey in the Unreal. history. No jockey in the history of the Derby, which will be run for, for the 143rd time, has won their first three mounts. A guy named Willie Sims in the 1800s won his first two Kentucky okay. Derbies and never had another mount. 
but Mario could go one step further. Where do you come up with that? That's, that's, that's an interesting stat, that, isn't it? Yeah. That, and you know nobody's going to check that out <laughs> either, right? <laughs> nope. That's I'll check it. Yeah. Accurate. <laughs> I'm used accurate. to checking his stuff. Mm -hmm. Anyway, uh, <laughs> yeah, Mario Gutierrez, two for two, two in the for derby. Two. Amazing mm -hmm. with, uh, yeah, he won the mile with both Taylor said and uh, Point Piper mm -hmm. and the derby the same years. God. I'll have another and Nyquist. Uh, tremendous, tremendous feat, and what a nice guy as well. Uh, mm -hmm. Just, uh, yeah, it was a pleasure to have him here on our anniversary. How about Derby long shots? You know, with the 20 horse field, mm -hmm. uh, there's going to be some. What do you, what do you like as a long shot Saturday? Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna come up with a scenario as my long shot, not necessarily horse, because the horse I picked is kind of a long shot. My scenario, we were talking about dead heats <laughs> and things like that, because we had a couple of near dead heats out here at Emerald Downs this past weekend. I, you know, in the history of the Kentucky Derby, the odds of getting a dead heat, it seems rather ridiculous. With these 20 horses being so closely matched, I think we're going to see a blanket finish with four or five horses at the wire, and the possibility exists that there may be a dead heat. That, that's a prediction, right? That's my long shot prediction, because I think these horses are so close to each other, they're all going to come flying at the end, and I think it's going to be that close. It's, it's been nearly 20 years that the Kentucky Derby has had a photo finish. So maybe I know. We're due. Well, I know. Yeah. No, I think I think we're due for one of those. Ninety-seven, I think. Yeah. Oh, 90, crazy. ninety-six. Uh, Bob mm -hmm. Baffert, Cavanier. I believe, his first uh, <clears throat> Derby runner, Cavanier, was oh. beaten the nose by Grindstone, who's yes. a Northwest sire. That, that was, was almost a, a dead heat. Yeah, yeah. that was nine, tight. Mm -hmm. Okay, your long shot pick. Let me see the PPs are real quick. Okay, <laughs> oh. while you go, I one down. I'm going to go with you Thunder put Snow. The down. Number yeah. two, Thunder Snow, is uh, coming over from across the pond. He's won three in a row. He's two for two this year as a three-year-old. Uh, Dubai-based horse, uh, trained by the Godolphin Connections, and uh, he looks like maybe a little better horse than what has come over in previous years from the uh, Far <coughs> East, or the Near East, excuse me. Mm. I'll go with Thunder Snow, 20 to one morning mm -hmm. line, and uh, Sumian is aboard. Who do you like for a long shot? You've done your... Homer, you yeah, only have about 30 right seconds. Now. So. I got a maiden, Sonatier with Kent DeSormo. Okay. Calumet Farm owned. They've won the most uh, derbies, right, Phil? I think six of them. You're asking Calumet me. Calumet Farm. Yeah. You're, the, you're Mr. Trivia over there. This horse enters a race 0 for 10 with four mm -hmm. seconds. Big closer. And uh, maybe can get a price at a fair fair odds because a lot of people see the horse as a maiden. They'll ignore the, ignore the horse. But you can use them mm -hmm. underneath in their exotics you know, and play the multiples. Play them. Okay. Got to play his them top multiples. pick is twenty to one. His long shot Sonatier <laughs> fifty to one. Happens 50. to have Sonatier three-time Kentucky Derby winning jockey Kent Desormo That's aboard. Right. Okay, we'll be watching on Saturday the Kentucky Derby. We'll be right back here on Emerald Downs Weekly. Emerald Downs Weekly, Kentucky Derby Week, and of course, racing at Emerald Downs Friday at 6.30, Saturday and Sunday at 2 p.m., and uh, everybody busy on Kentucky Derby Day. We're opening a little bit early that day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think 7, 7 a.m., you can come on the track, and I think Churchill's got 13, 14 races, full card, uh, six graded stakes. Oh, it should boy. be a very busy day, action all day, other tracks running, and we go live at 2 o'clock. Yeah. 2 o'clock? Talked about the hat contest, and uh, we have that big screen. That has really enhanced the Derby Day experience. Yeah, for, for fans. folks that haven't been out here in a couple of years, mm -hmm. we have this 1,100 square foot big screen in the infield. And um, because we put it in when we put it in a couple of years ago, so last year was the first time we actually mm -hmm. showed a Kentucky Derby yeah. up on the big screen. And for all the folks outside, it was thrilling to be with that many people watching it on that big of a size uh, monitor and cheering for your favorite horse. It was crazy, and it's going to be a lot of fun on Saturday when we show that race on the big screen and on all the TVs throughout the facility. Yeah, mm -hmm. okay. And uh, check out the Emerald Downs races on Saturday. Uh, Saturday afternoon, we start at 2 o'clock, and keep an eye on a couple of our uh, older trainers. Uh, there's octogenarians, guys in their 80s, <laughs> and there's also a word I learned last year, nanogenarians really fellas in their 90s and uh we have a couple of 90 plus year old trainers that are off to fantastic starts this year yeah last year they won on the same night arturo yeah. arboleda and uh, don munger on the same night won a race and we went scrambling around thinking 
if it's not the first time that's ever happened in the history of North American racing, I'd be surprised. And this year, they're both 93 years old, and they each have won three, three. races now here oh, at yeah. the meet. It's unbelievable. It's been tremendous. Uh, and mm -hmm. that, that night that Phil's talking about, I think Jim Penny, Neil Knapp, and Bob mm -hmm. Meeking all won on that day too, three fellas in their 80s. Those aren't the only guys, as you see the standings, uh, mm -hmm. Blaine Wright, mm -hmm. Frank Lucarelli, uh, Mike Puich, uh, at Charles Essex, et cetera, much younger. But the, those guys are putting their experience and their expertise to good work this year so far, Arboleda and Munger. Yes, and you know, this is our 22nd year of racing here at Emerald Downs, and both of the, these <clears throat> trainers have won at least one race in 21 of the 22 years. Wow. And in fact, and both of them have had numerous long shots. Our Turtles won 45 races, Emerald Downs career, and I believe no glasses he goes. He won 28 of 16 of these races were won by double digit horses. Wow. Mm. And Munger's won 104 races at Emerald Downs with 23 being double digit prices, 10 to 1 or higher. Okay. So they've won and had some very big pays. So if you followed, you know, these two trainers over the years, you've gotten some big win tickets. What other sport could you I mean, you look at managers in baseball and and different coaches and everything else, what other sport would have I mean, two 93-year-old trainers who are active and winning races out here against all these other very talented trainers. Um, yep. We have a great um, crew of trainers out here, but those two guys mm -hmm. are special. And we have a third 90-year-old. He hasn't won yet this year, but eventually that's going to happen oh, as yeah. well. Yeah, Pat Mullins uh, just turned 90 in the winter, and uh, he's been here since day one and goes yeah. back to Long Acres and uh, around uh, <coughs> 1980 time. So... Uh, yeah, he'll be the third one to win this year, and others aren't too far behind, but it's been tremendous with Arturo Arboleda. Just uh, he looks much younger than his age. And mm -hmm. Don, uh, Don Munger is, you know, Don's aged a little bit, but, uh, you know, he served the country at Iwo Jima for the U.S. Marines in World War II and saw a lot of action. Uh, he's worked uh, his entire life since building his farm on Crane Corner in Enumclaw in the early 1950s. And... Uh, he still represents awful darn well with all his sons and daughters of Nachismo. So those 93-year-olds, and Don said uh, earlier in his career, not that many years ago, he says, what do you do when you retire? You mm. do what you like to do. Well, this is what I like to do. So he's still training and uh, more wins hopefully from Don. And uh, these guys, they're out here every morning. They're active. This is not just a name only. They're right. out there training these horses. Arturo, last year, he's walking around the hall and because uh, he likes to hang out in our mutual office and kind of wait for the race, and then he comes out and watches the race. And, and he was moving a little extra slow one day. I said, Arturo, what's the matter? He says, I got kicked. He got kicked by a horse. I mean, he's 92 getting kicked by a horse. Hey. I mean, but he is active and gets around here and does a great job and wins races. It's really something to see. This is the fountain of youth here at Emerald Downs. Mm -hmm. There you go. Yeah. And uh, speaking of Arturo, um, he was the trainer of two winners last weekend, and we had a couple of very thrilling finishes. The first yeah. race on Saturday, the first race on Sunday. On Saturday, it was Kazaba coming down the stretch, mm -hmm. getting up the photo finish camera shows. Kazaba the winner, trained by Arturo Arboleda. And on Sunday, the first race, Cat and Bird didn't look like a winner at the 8th pole or the 16th pole, but he got up. Yeah. And those were two <clears throat> pretty darn close to being triple dead heats, Gary. Yeah, that was very exciting. Uh, Cat and Bird just split horses at the wire and had his nose on the wire at the right, right time. And that was a, a great, thrilling end of the race. And I was in the mutual room that, uh, that morning <laughs> talking to Turo. And uh, he says, hey, don't ignore my horse in the first <laughs> race. And... By golly, he was right. Mm -hmm. Yep. So Cat and Bird and Kozaba, both winners this weekend in near triple dead heat. Three horses right there on the wire. Mm. And Arturo got the better of both of those photos. And that was, uh, well, a very unique happenstance, a triple dead heat in racing. It's never happened at Emerald Downs. I don't remember it happening at Long Acres uh, going well back. Maybe it did in the older years, but uh, we did have one in the 90s in Washington State. Yeah, Yakima Meadows. Yeah. I remember that one. What year was it? I think it was 95, the year before we opened here. Okay. Uh, you Might know, I got a piece of trivia on this one. You mm -hmm. know the names of the horses, right? 
or do you? I don't. You don't? Okay, so I, I don't either. Do you know? No. Uh, no but I, I do don't. know the track announcer. <laughs> The yep. track announcer is Tom Harris, right? Oh, Tommy called a race. Okay. But who's going to be uh, joining us here at Emerald Downs later mm-hmm. on this meet. But here's a trivia part of this that you guys probably don't remember. That was the last time, I'm safely saying the last time, that a Washington horse race was shown on ESPN Sports Center. Okay. I know it's a rival network to really? CSN, but they showed that race. They showed that stretch, that triple dead heat <laughs> on Sports Center. It was a big thrill for everybody in Washington racing yeah. that that was on. A very rare occurrence, a triple dead heat in thoroughbred racing. Okay, we'll come back with more from Emerald Downs on Emerald Downs Weekly. Emerald Downs Weekly, 8 to 9 on CSN. Every Thursday evening you're watching. Thank you for joining us. Joe Withy along with track president Phil Ziegler and promotions manager Gary Doherty. And uh, hey, Matt in motion. Uh, He is going to be part of the show. He sits here once in a while as well. Let's take a look and see what happened to Matt this week. What's going on, guys? This is Matt in motion. Let's head to the backstretch and see if there's anybody who will let me be their jockey for the day. This is going to be the greatest day of our lives. You ever ridden a horse before? I've never ridden a horse before. Actually, I did, but we're not going to talk about that. (laughs) I think it's a little dangerous. Eh. Guess we'll find out, huh? Yeah, I guess so. What could go wrong? I mean, I don't think really anything could go wrong. Riding a horse is so much fun. Let's go looking around. There's got to be a trainer here that's going to let me ride their horse. Nope, he's not in here. Holy shit, that's a dirty office. <laughs> that is a really dirty office right there. Any trainers around here looking for a prospective jockey? I want to ride you. I want to ride you too. And I want to ride you as well. Hey, can I ride you? Yes? Well, we gotta find your trainer first, but I saw that head nod. I know you want it. Oh, there's Vince Gibson. Hey, Vince, uh, can I ride one of your horses? Yeah, you can come out to my house and ride one. I got a nice one for you to ride. Can you ride one here? No, not here. Aw, darn it. Failed again. I will ride you one day. We won't tell Vince. Let's go look for some more trainers. Oh, 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 this cart tried to trick me. Anybody home? Tom Wenzel, he's out uh, getting some quarter shoot lunch. Oh, look, there's Doris Harwood in her office over there. Doris has had a lot of success over the years. I'm feeling good about this one. Can I, can I ride one of your horses? You have to have a license, a helmet, a safety vest, boots. What are you talking to here? Yeah, one of your horses. You know, you got a lot of good horses here. Can I ride just one of them? No. <laughs> well, we tried. Your legs are too long. My legs are too long, she says. We're at Kay and Bryson Cooper's barn. They've got a lot of good horses here. Oh, there's Kay. Hi, Kay. Good. How are you doing? Hey, can I ride one of your horses? Are you crazy? Absolutely not. Hey, Richard, can I ride your horse? Uh, Yeah, (laughs) no. (laughs) Guess we got to look for some other trainers because nobody wants me to ride their horses. Oh, Mary Tate's barn. Hi, Mary. You know what, Mary, I'm sort of on a quest here to ride a horse. Do you think I could ride one of them? Uh, I don't know, Matt. They're all racehorses. I mean, what could possibly go wrong? What could go right? That seems like a good adventure. We should go on it. Come on. Which horse? 
I think Papa Frank, he's feeling it right over there. There he is. Well, all right, I guess if you want to, we can give him a try. Yes! Okay, we're gonna ride a horse. No, I don't know what I signed up for here. <sighs> a little small, that's okay. You know what, I, th I think we're gonna be okay. Uh oh, I think I just undid it. Uh, I might need some help putting this vest on. It's so small. <laughs> Put it through there. You know, I am single. We'll make it as loose as we can. Oh, yeah, we'll make this fit. Yeah. <laughs> just saying. These poor horses, they just want to be ridden too. Okay, Papa Frank, you want me to ride this horse? Look how crazy he is, Mary. He's a psycho. You wanted to ride him. <sighs> Touche. I'm gonna ride a psycho. Oh, kitty cat. Hi, kitty. Come here. <laughs> Come here, little kitty cat. Oh, no. <laughs> I don't know how to twirl this stick, but get in the zone, you know, gotta touch your toes, stretch a little bit. Get in the zone. Man, I thought announcing horse race you gotta get in the zone, but this is just a whole new level right here. I'm gonna be scared shitless. Do you mean the horse or me? Okay. <laughs> Matt, did you see how fast this horse can move? Oh yeah. What should we what should we do? Ready? Rescue Left party. leg, right? All right, you ready? One, two, three. Let's go. Made it. We made it. There you go, buddy. There you go. Where are we going? We should go down that way. Let's go. Let me put the stirrup in there. Okay, there we go. You're doing it, Matt. I'm doing it. See? He feels like a champion already. Grade one winner. I'm riding Arrogate in the Dubai World Cup. I'm Mike Smith. Okay, get your legs up. Okay. I just cramped up in my hip. I'm not. <laughs> oh. It's a weird set of muscles. Here. Yeah. I'm gonna put my reins like this. Loose rein them, right? Matt fails as a jockey. It's yeah, I don't have much control. All right, Papa Frank. You ready? I'm ready. You gonna make the loop on your own? Yep. Okay. <laughs> there you go, buddy. I can feel the power under me as we go around the racetrack. Easy, buddy. See, I can only stand up like this for only a certain amount of time before. Good boy. Easy, buddy. Anything is possible if you just put your mind to it. Oh, of course. Hey, ho, oh, oh, ho, oh. ho. There we go. And the good news is we didn't even have to use the whip, huh? Yet. I'm gonna be sore tomorrow morning. Yeah, buddy. Go. He's feeling frisky. Papa Frank feeling frisky after another day at the office. Go see Mary. What a good boy. You are a good boy. Mary, thanks for letting me ride Papa Frank. Anytime. How do you think I did? Great. Okay, we good. We should take him to the trials next. We should. After his next race, we'll take him. First stop, racetrack. Next stop, the trails. All right, guys, I live the dream of riding a racehorse. That does it for me, Papa Frank, and this little cat. We'll be back next time for Matt in Motion. See you guys later. Thanks again for joining us on Emerald Downs Weekly, 8 to 9 p.m. every Thursday night on CSN, previewing the weekend. Matt in motion. 
He looks pretty darn comfortable on a racehorse, Gary. He does. Better than a golf cart, I heard. <laughs> I've heard that same <laughs> thing as well. I heard that. It was against my wall. So oh, so really? you have proof. <laughs> well, I heard it. <laughs> I looked out. Matt? Forward or backward? Uh, Find out where those brakes uh, are. He was supposed to go backwards. Okay. Yeah. Went a little forward. <laughs> anyway, pretty entertaining, Matt, in motion. Uh, <laughs> You know, tomorrow, Friday, the Kentucky Oaks to be run. Uh, really, the top three-year-old Philly race in the country. And it is Friday. You can catch it here at Emerald Downs. A big field and a local tie in the Kentucky Oaks as well. Herman Sarkowski, one of the most prominent men in Washington racing history, an original investor in Emerald Downs, a member of the Washington Thoroughbred Hall of Fame, yeah. and uh, just a tremendous force locally and nationally in thoroughbred racing. Herman, unfortunately, did pass away a few years ago, but Paradise Woods is owned in part by his son, Steve, and Paradise Woods is the morning line favorite for the Kentucky Oaks. Uh, Herman, before he passed, said, I'd kind of like to keep this horse in the family, and boy, was he right. She Mm -hmm. is looking to be a good one. So good luck to uh, Steve Sarkowski and Paradise Woods in the Kentucky Oaks. Um, We have racing on Friday nights. Fab Fridays, 6.30 p.m. We have a feature race. Uh, who's going to win that race, Phil? Oh. Um, Your handicapping hat. I know. I went with number one, Roman Booze. Yeah. A um, lot of speed in this race, so I went with a closer. That okay. was my angle. Natasha Coddington aboard there. I'm going to take the three old-timers vision. Uh, that horse won two races here as a two-year-old, two as a three-year-old, and two last year as a five-year-old. He likes this track. All six of his wins are at Emerald Downs. Uh, he had a little bit of racing at Turf <coughs> Paradise recently this spring, but he's back home now, mm-hmm. and he can sprint or route. Uh, Neil Knapps had him uh, the horse's entire career. I look for old-timers' vision to just be tough in a $10,000, $8,000 claimer at six furlongs. Who do you like today? Uh, it's good field. I went with uh, Perfect Night from the Howard Billboard Band. Okay. Uh, second start of a layoff, uh, show good speed. In his first race of uh, this calendar year, I expect uh, he's more fit and could, could surprise and be near the lead throughout. Okay. He comes out of that tough race a couple of weeks ago, won by uh, Alan Bozell's horse. Uh, Mr. Breeze. Mr. Yeah. Breeze over Solemnly Swear. Okay. Uh, is the uh, Trifecta King maybe headed toward that race uh, for your angle on Friday? I think so. Yeah. Ah. It, it's a full ah. field. Uh, the last weekend, three days of racing, uh, uh, no cashers uh, had the winner of the three races, but couldn't get the underneath wow. horse in there. So still have a profit, Phil. Still doing good. Well, that but one you hit's going to keep you going for a while. Yeah. So that's good. So that's what we'll get back at it this weekend, and I think I'll use that this race. We on were the really Friday nice night. to you on this show after you hit that big trifecta. Yeah. That well, was half the show, but he hit yeah. uh, a big trifecta, and that has him with a positive return on his investment so far. Yep. Mm-hmm. And so all three of the races you picked last week, you did have the winner in the top slot? I did. Okay. One of the two horses. Well, and were close. And couldn't get the other horse into the, into the mix. So we'll That's give trifecta it. wagering. Yep. Is the trifecta king, if folks can't uh, make it to the track, is that up on the website anywhere? Um, we might, we can, might send it on Twitter. You're going to tweet that out? Yeah. All right. Because it's in our program, program. but for the folks, and by the way, if you can't make it, you know, we're talking about all these great races and coming out to Emerald Downs. If you can't make it to Emerald Downs, you could always watch and wager on NairaBets.com. They're one of our sponsors of Emerald Downs Weekly, Mm -hmm. and they have some great sign-up specials going on right now, especially right before the big races. If you've never opened an online account, you could do that legally in Washington and bet on the races. And it's always a good time right before a big event like this because yeah. they're running promotions and bonus payouts and things like okay. that. So check out NairaBets.com. And, uh, yeah, and you can watch our top race of the week. That's going to be Sunday, the Seattle Stakes for three-year-old Phillies, $50,000 in purse money. And two of the top names in there haven't raced yet this year. Blazon Beauty was the Emerald Downs top two-year-old mm-hmm. filly last year. Risque's Legacy, a Washington bred, was the Washington bred champion two-year-old filly of 2016. They're expected to run, along with Always Enough, a 10-length first out winner. Mm-hmm. And also yep. uh, Retreat Yourself from Doris Harwood's barn, who's two for two. That race is shaping up as a really good early season stake. Yeah, it's so exciting that we Mm -hmm. finally get to go here with our stake schedule. This is the first one of the year, and then we have one pretty much every weekend throughout the summer. Check our website for that and all the details, but those $50,000 races are always exciting. 
And uh, that's this Sunday. Next yeah. Sunday, the 14th, Mother's Day, a lot going on there, Gary. Yeah, this Sunday is the first family day of the year. We have some big inflatables out in the park for the kids. Uh, pony rides will be here on this coming Sunday. The following Sunday, like you said, is Mother's Day. I heard it's a big crowd, a lot of people are showing mm -hmm. up. It's going to be a big buffet on the 14th. And the following weekend, Ostrich and Camel Racing, <laughs> okay. May 21st. Oh. That will be memorable. You, okay. You've been trying to recruit folks to ride these things. Have you been successful? Yes. I, we need nine jockeys, and we're getting there. I the think beat we goes on on Emerald Downs <laughs> Weekly. Thanks for watching. Enjoy your racing weekend. you got to ride an ostrich, Gary. Come on. Gary's just 160 and 130. I think it's 130 for us. Uh, I don't know that you can pull that off. Mm. I can't pull the 160. Right? Oh, okay. Yes.